Rub up your engines! FS says, I just got my catalytic converter stolen. What's the best option to protect it? Hide it in the garage and lock the door. You can buy various shields that bolt on over it, but of course, the thieves can unbolt them. If you really want it not stolen, have a shield put on that's welded on. And then, and they're not going to go through the bother of cutting a whole welded shield off. They see it's welded on. If it's bolted on, they're going to unbolt it. But if it's welded on, then they're going to have to cut the whole thing off. That's going to take more time, and they'll go on to the next car. That's the thing. When it comes to things being stolen, always make your car the hardest one to steal so they'll go away and steal somebody who's easier say you got an alarm on your house your neighbor doesn't guess whose house they're gonna rob your neighbor's house because he doesn't have an alarm they see you have an alarm they ever hear it going off or they see stickers and lights they'll go on to the next one or a camera on your French porch neighbor doesn't have a camera guess where they're going always put the highest level you can get on there to make them go somewhere else Justin Tupper says it's a straight six cylinder and BMW is a good engine yeah they're great engines BMW made great engines their six cylinder engines are insanely strong engines they're kind of gas hoggy they're not the greatest for gas mods but they can run and run and they can take a lot of pressure too the newer ones some of them have two turbochargers on a straight six engine put out like 385 horsepower they're strong engines it's the rest the electronics and everything on bmws that break down and they cost a fortune because they're luxury cars and little plastic parts will cost 500 dollars they'll have to take half the engine apart to get to the little plastic part that part's not any good but the engines are solid thomas Nett said scott if you were buying a corolla hybrid new how long would you keep it to avoid problems in well, I'd never buy a new car because I'm too cheap. From my experience of the regular Prius hybrids, they generally don't start to fall apart till they're about 15 years old. And the batteries generally last anywhere from 150 to 200,000 miles. So if you're happy with that kind of stuff, go ahead, buy it. I've driven the hybrid Corollas. They're fun to drive around. They get phenomenal gas mileage, too. And they're a lot nicer looking than the Priuses. I thought the Prius was kind of weird looking. And the hybrid Corolla just looks like a Corolla. And the Corollas look a lot better than they used to. We had a... 81 Corolla, kind of an ugly, boxy looking car, but it ran forever. Matthew says, for the new generation Honda Accords, would you recommend the 1.5 or the 2? Definitely the 2. If you want a bigger engine, it's going to last longer. The 1.5 engines won't last as long, especially if they're GDI and turbocharged. They will wear out faster. The 2 liter engines are a more proven engine. They're a stronger engine. And those 1.5s in the past had oil dilution problems. Whether Honda's fixed or not, no one really knows. I don't want a really tiny engine in a mid-sized car like an Accord. Two liters is perfectly fine. I would not go down to 1.5 liters. The tiny bit better gas mods you get isn't worth it in the long run if you keep your cars forever. Nathaniel Rudolph says, Scotty, love your vids. I learned a lot. I have a 2015 Chrysler 200C with the ZF 9-speed. It has 167,000 miles and I love it. Hardly any issues. You got a special 200C. The 200s were rolling junk mobiles, but you got the 200C and it's got German ZF 9-speed transmission. The ZF sold millions of those things every year they are such good transmissions and if you take care of the engine and don't overheat it and change the oil regularly it could last now you don't want one of those things that has the chrysler or the fiat transmission and of course not but that is a very good transmission and as long as you take care of it just keep driving it. it's because it's the 200c the regular 200s <laughs> They were rolling piles of junk, but you got a decent one. I don't know if you even knew it when you bought it. <laughs> Sometimes people don't know. Kevin P says, how long can an 09 Mazda Miata MX-5 engine last to taken care of? Well, I've seen 450,000 miles of them and they're still running okay. They're just a straight four-cylinder engine, pretty well-built, cute little car, convertible top. I like them with a the hard top and a convertible top so you can put the hard top on in the winter because snow and stuff doesn't work that well with a rag top, but uh, they can last an awful long time. Just change the oil every five, 6,000 miles. It's the main maintenance on that car. It can last a long time. Daniel F. says, Scotty, is the Tesla Cybertruck a good truck? Well, who knows? It's just an idea. They don't actually make them yet. They may never make them. Who knows? <laughs> it's an idea. It looks like something Homer Simpson would have designed. You know, won't fit in people's garages. I personally doubt if they'll ever actually build anything that looks like that because I can't see them passing any stringent federal laws about hitting pedestrians and damage them and things like that. So I doubt they'll actually ever build one that looks just like that's kind of a toy. Homer Simpson idea of what a truck should look like so you never know about something until it's out and people are actually driving the things around and they aren't you can't say until they actually build them and people actually drive them for years Kevin Gutierrez says Scotty my dad has a 97 Nissan Pathfinder when it goes 40 to 50 it starts to shake what do you think it is well first thing you want to do is just check your tire balance if the tires aren't balanced it'll start shaking at a certain speed if the steering wheel is shaking definitely the front tires are either out of round or they're out of balance or the rims are belt now if it's not the steering wheel but the whole vehicle then check the 
the back tires. Those are the most common things that make it shake and you get at higher speeds. Now, if you got worn parts like ball joints, tie rods, that can do it too. You always want to jack it up and see if anything's loose. Watch my video, how to check your own car suspension out. Scotty, type that on YouTube. You'll watch the video, but a lot of times it's just out of balance tires. And I showed you how to check them. Yes, sir, says Scotty. What do you think is better? A 2013 Honda Accord Coupe I-4 Automatic or 2012 Ford Fusion I-4 Automatic? Oh, the Accord by far. It'll outlast that Fusion. It'll go two to three times as far. Break down a lot less. The Fusions were okay, but you're talking about the four-cylinder ones. And eh, the V6 ones were much better than the four-cylinder ones. With a Honda, I like the four-cylinder ones more than the six-cylinder ones. So I would definitely go with Honda on that one because those things can go three, four, five hundred thousand miles if you take care of them. The Fusion with the four-cylinder it will never last that long. Kingman says, Scotty, what'll happen if I put water in my coolant? I had to add some temporarily because the engine temperature was high. You want to have in your cooling system a mix of 50% antifreeze and 50% water. And if you put a bunch of water in, now it's going to be off. And it can cause rust and cavitation damage in the engine. So what you do is you have a mechanic like myself just get his tester and test and tell you what's in it. And if he says now 70% water and 30% coolant, he would drain some of it out and then add pure antifreeze until it was a 50-50 mix. Or or if you want, buy a tester yourself, test it yourself, and make it 50-50 again. Juan Moreno says, 2016 Triumph T120 motorcycle. What do you think of this motorcycle? Well, I own a 2011 Triumph Thruxton. I like Triumphs now. You got to realize that motorcycle isn't an English motorcycle. They're made in Thailand, but they do a very good job. The Thais actually build twin-cylinder Triumph motorcycles better than the British ever did. Mine doesn't leak oil. It starts all the time. It runs like a dream. Sounds great. Those are great little motorcycles. Now, they're kind of overpriced new, but you can get a good deal on a used one like I did. Don't waste your money spending 12, 15 grand for a new one. Get a used one like I did. Buy one for four or five. Save a bunch of money because they can last a really long time. Michael Gomez says, my wife wants a new 2021 van or SUV. What brand is reliable? Do you want a van or SUV? If she wants a van, get a Toyota Sienna. Nothing is more reliable than a Toyota Sienna. If you want an SUV, then you got a bunch of choices. There's a Toyota 4Runner. There's a Toyota Highlander. There's various Hondas that you might like or the Acuras, which are just fancy Hondas. Or if you want more money, the Lexuses, that are fancy Toyotas, but they cost a lot more money. The cheaper ones, as far as I'm concerned, are just as well. I've seen Forerunners and Highlanders with half a million miles on them, so they're going to last a long time, too, and they're cheaper to repair than the luxury ones. Luxury car parts, for some bizarre reason, always cost more money. That suits a Scott. I'm a college student. Should I buy a Toyota Camry with 145,000 miles for 2700 bucks? Why not? I bought my son his first car. I bought him a Toyota Camry that had like 140,000 miles. I had to pay three grand for it, and he drove it until... You Years later, he T-boned a telephone pole and bent the car in half. It still ran perfectly fine, but you couldn't drive because it was bent in half. Have a mechanic check it out. You can't really trust anybody. You don't know. But if the mechanic says you could go ahead and buy it, those things can last an awful long time. They're really well-made vehicles. But do have a mechanic check it out. A lot of crooked people, son. Flood cars, wrecked cars. Get it checked out first. BMW wants to bowl us over with technology. They've gone even further. Their BMW iDrive 8 has an infotainment system that has artificial intelligence, natural language, recognition and a face. Yes, when it's talking to you, it has various round and spiral stick drawing of people talking to you so you can see if it's smiling or it's sad while it's interacting with you. They've really taken it a step further. It can sense that, oh, your feet are cold. It sends more heat to your feet. Well, I work on BMWs and I know when they break, they cost a fortune to fix. This is going to be yet another insanity when it does break. Maybe it starts frowning when it's supposed to smile or start saying weird things. Who knows? The least expensive 2020 BMW i8 is their i8 two-door coupe, which only has a 1.5 three-cylinder engine in it, yet they started $147,500. You're paying for this stuff. Who's going to pay $148,000 for a car that's only got a three-cylinder engine in it? Kind of amazes me. Ford's gone the other way. They have three-cylinder engines, but they put them in their cheaper vehicles. They say they're going to put it in their Ford Maverick that they claimed was going to be under twenty grand. Probably won't be, but there's a big difference between a $20,000 pickup truck and a $148,000 car if they both have three-cylinder engines in them. I start to wonder about where these guys' mindset are. I can see the guys wanting to buy a big old V8, V12 for $150,000, exotic sports car, $148,000 for a three-cylinder car, but I can't see too many people paying $148,000 for a car that's got a three-cylinder engine <laughs> artificial intelligence on their infotainment system and it can make little faces at you and stuff. I'm sure somebody else will come up with an aftermarket one for, you know, $300 and they'll make them in China or something eventually.
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.